This is a quad-core cell phone. It's got four processors in it. All together, there's between a half to one billion transistors in this phone. The way we create value in the computing industry is this empirical process of Moore's Law, where stuff gets smaller, cheaper, faster. We are at 22 nanometers today. Some of the frontier fabrication sites are developing 60 nanometers. And eventually, we'll come out to a scale that will have only one atom inside the transistor. And we cannot go beyond that. There is just no physical possibility to scale beyond that point. A new center at the University of Michigan will guide the computing industry through the approaching end of Moore's Law. The Center for Future Architectures Research will work to design the computing architectures of 2025 and overcome some of the biggest challenges to shrinking silicon. Computing today is really amazing. On my cell phone, I can do all kinds of things that help me in my daily tasks. Like I can talk to it, tell it what to do. If I'm sitting in a boring meeting, I can play Angry Birds. But all this computing started over a half century ago with devices like this ENIAC. This is just a small chunk of a very, very large computer that was built in the 40s. All this thing could do is add, subtract, multiply. This is the backside of one of the ENIAC cases. Many of these form the entire computer. We use switches to build computing devices. These particular switches are vacuum tubes. In the early 70s, the first silicon-based transistor appeared, and it started replacing vacuum tubes. The full ENIAC had about 5,000 tubes in it. One of those tubes in today's transistors is about 22 nanometers in width. If you took 300,000 of those transistors and put them end to end, they would be as wide as a human hair. Now our center is focused on the design of these devices. How do we build computing systems for tomorrow that address those challenges? We really need to understand how do we use these super small transistors. Now one of the things we got when going from the ENIAC to the cell phone is all the smaller transistors were faster and used less power. That isn't true anymore. The other challenge is small transistors are very fragile. So now we need to understand how do we build big complex system with billions of transistors if some of those transistors might be breaking while we're making a phone call. Today, a microprocessor easily encompasses at least one billion transistors. It's extremely complex to figure out what do I do with a billion transistors that's gonna make my customer happier than they were before with a half a billion transistor chip. That's exactly what the center is about. How do we develop new technologies so that we can do better and smarter things with the computing abilities we have from where silicon technology is gonna bring us in the next 10, 15 years. Maybe a little hard to see, but that little speck right there is a complete computer. It's one millimeter cubed. This exists because of this continuous, what we call scaling, Moore's Law in the computing industry. And this computer is, opens up a lot of very interesting applications. One of the applications they want to do with it is to put it into someone's eye and use it to measure pressure for glaucoma patients. Think about how your life is affected by computing. Think about how it was affected 10 years ago. And think about in the next 10 years, the great things that can come out of computing. If we don't address the challenges of continuing to move the computing industry forward, that stops. When that stops, we've got a lot of people out of work. We, as a society, don't benefit as much from computing. And I think that's pretty devastating. It wasn't a, just an issue of taking one component like the memory or the processor and bringing it down in power. All of them had to be redesigned. Uh, to be much lower power. 